What's up, guys? Welcome back to another trade review. You're here with Calvin. Instagram at Calvi. Make sure you give me a follow. Um, today we're talking about Microsoft. I ran a pyramid on this, and I'm going to come out right out and say it. There were some things I did on this trade that were great, and there were some things I did on this trade that could have been better, but that's the whole purpose of going back and reviewing your trades. Uh, if you don't have a trading journal, I suggest you get one. It's one of the most powerful tools you can have, but let's go ahead and get into this trade. So for this trade, I was buying the December 420 calls and the pyramid I was running, I started here at the 100 day and I drew it all the way down to here with the 200 day running right through the middle of it. Okay, so this was kind of the, the pyramid, so to speak. So I started buying on this day right here. And at that time, the premiums were going for about 25, okay? AKA 2,500. Now, I recognize, I recognize those are pretty expensive contracts. So when I was building out this pyramid, kind of the way I did it was I said, all right, at the top level, I'm gonna buy 2,500 worth, another 2,500. 5,000 and then 7,500. I ran five legs on this. So this is kind of how I loaded the pyramid. And long story short, you know, I loaded all the way through here. And when we got down on this day, I had 10 contracts at 18.86 average, okay? Now, let's talk about a couple of things that I did great and a couple of things I did poorly on this trade. I would say um, I drew the pyramid almost perfectly. You can see it filled almost to the bottom exactly, and then we bounced out of there. Some things I would have changed though, typically I do not take a third bounce. So what I mean by that is we had a bounce here, a bounce here. The third time, usually it's weaker, and you can see that I had to deal with a lot of chop on this, which is not great for your theta. Um, theta is basically like your daily pay to play with options. And also with earnings on October 30th, I didn't really have to get the Decembers. I probably could have settled for the Novembers, paid a little less and had a little more cash to average down here at the bottom, but it is what it is. So we'll just go ahead and get into what happened on this trade. So. We got a, two really strong green days right out of the gate. On this day right here, I did trim. And the reason I trimmed right there was because if I throw up the 10 EMA, you can see that we tapped the 10 EMA right there. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. So right here, I trimmed. I think I trimmed 20% of my position. Things were looking good. Next day, you know, we come down, but we throw in a couple, couple dojis couple, you know, tiny high wave candles under the tin. Still no cause for concern. The next day, we gap up and run. Now, this was the heartbreaker because at this point right here, I was up about $2,500 on the trade. I was going to take off a bunch here at 425. We didn't quite make it there. The next day, we open high and slam down, but it turns into a hammer and we close above the 10 as well as the 200. So I'm still feeling pretty good about it. The next day, we gap down and it gets a little scary. I actually, I had my stop right here, um, but this formed into a hammer. I, I kind of wish I'd added back the ones I trimmed here, but it's not really a part of my rules, so I didn't do that. Next day, we gap up. I'm like, okay, this is it. We're gonna break out, fade. <laughs> Just messing with me every day. Another couple candles under the 200. And then on this day, we finally break out. Now, I'll be honest, because of all the uh, problems we were having around this level, I actually decided when we got to about here on that day to close the entire position. Now you'd think, oh, well, you were up 2,500, right? Because you were up 2,500 over here. No. By the time we chopped for a week, Theta had eaten me up so much that I was only up a thousand here. So I only walked away with about a thousand dollars on this trade. Still a win, but 
if I had to redo this trade again, probably what I would have done is picked a shorter strike. So I'll write it out here. Picked a shorter strike, a shorter dated strike. I might have done it with GGLL, which if you're not familiar with what GGLL is, it's kind of one step up from the regular, sorry, not GGLL, confusing you guys, MSFU, okay? MSFU is the 2X leveraged uh, ETF for Microsoft. So if Microsoft shares move 1%, this is gonna move 2% and vice versa. Probably would have been better off doing this with MSFU because you don't have to worry about as much of that decay through the chop. Now you are gonna get a little bit of decay on these because um, you know single stock leveraged ETFs, the way they're built is off of like weekly calls like that's how these ETFs are built so you do get a little decay but not nearly as much as like actually buying options so if I had to redo this I probably would have bought MSFU all through here and then started buying shorter dated calls here like the Novembers that would have probably worked out a lot better for me um, especially with earnings right around the corner because I knew I had to be out of this before earnings also if I had done done that with the MSFU shares I would have probably held all the way through here some of them and gotten to taking advantage of this gap up here on earnings. So live and learn. But overall, this trade was really, really good. Um, you know, patience is key with these things. I'm trying to see what else I can shed light on for you guys. You know, target was always going to be the 100 day. I really should have held to then, but... I didn't, whatever. I think when it's all said and done, this trade should have been probably three to 5K if I had done it uh, correctly, but it's all good. The strategy is still kind of one that I'm working on, learning on, but you can see back here that on the first and second touch of the 200, really good bounces. I mean, you're just talking about a deep fill here, then one, two, three, four, five days of pretty much straight up action, and then it explodes to the to the hundred day. Here was awesome too. Just a few days under the two hundred, and then explodes up to the hundred. That's what I was kind of hoping for here, but we chopped around for quite a while before it happened. But all that to say, love running this on Mag Seven stocks. Um, they're kind of built to go up over time, so I'll definitely be running this again. Just kind of wait, see what happens after earnings on a lot of these stocks, like if we're gonna get some big names gapping down. I did see today that um, AMD is gapping down, so this could be a potential player. Uh, if I go to the weekly here, we are still pretty far away from the 100, but um, you know, if we wanna kinda pull back into these levels here, this could be another pyramid that I'm kinda interested in. Um, that's what I'm looking at. Obviously, everyone's always looking at Apple. What's Apple going to do? Um, if Apple wants to pull back into that 100 day, that's something I'd be interested in. Just because we never actually touched it here, here, or here. So that'd be a really cool pyramid over, over Apple. Um, your other major players are Tesla. This was just beautiful right here. I know a lot of people RLT caught this. You have the island reversal right off the 100 day, and then explodes up. Great Mag 7 pyramid play right there. What else do we have? Amazon. Did the Amazon report yet? They report Thursday, but they're already gapping up. Once again, you can see it. Pyramid off the 200, pyramid off the 100. Even here, this would have worked. So, I mean, wow. Amazon really does this well. Lots of opportunities, guys. Um, I encourage you to try this strategy. Uh, doing it with options is a little riskier. I would I would recommend one of those single stock leveraged ETFs or just doing it with straight up shares, you know, shares of Amazon. You're going to need more buying power, but it's a really great it's a really great way to look at it. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Drop a comment on this video and I'll be trying to do a lot more of these for you guys. I'm my plan is to be running a pyramid at least once once or twice a month, so you'll be getting a lot more on this strategy. But I'm telling you, just go back and back test this. It works a lot. You know, I mean, the proof is in the charts, right? So hope you enjoy this. Have an amazing weekend, and I will talk to you guys soon.
Guys, if you have not checked out Apex Trader Funding yet, we are officially partnered with them. You have to check it out. It's never been easier to trade with a lot of capital. You don't need a lot of capital anymore to be in this game. I suggest you all go out, pick up a, uh, you know, either a 25 or 50K account. Use our code REAL and you'll get anywhere from 50 to 80% off. This is futures trading. You're absolutely going to love it. With Apex 3.0, the rules have become easier than ever and a lot of people are getting amazing payouts. You can see down here at the bottom, tons of people getting payouts here at Apex. Jump in, check it out. I know you're going to love it.